So hello and welcome to another webinar from D Brown Consulting. Today we're going to be talking about actuals versus budget with Power BI. So actuals versus budget. So this really is a typical thing that financial modelers are kind of interested in. They're comparing actuals against budget. So management accountants, accountants and the rest, they compare actual against budget and they do a variance analysis and stuff. So they do a lot of this in Excel. And uh, they could be considered they could be considered a bit of a modeling thing. So today we're going to be doing Power BI, Excel, and modeling all in one. We're just going to use actual data and see how use of Power Query in Power BI and using of Power BI itself can kind of uh, automate this uh, modeling, automate how we build a small model that has actual data and budget data, and we do comparisons. So if you haven't joined already, please join our Power BI user group and also join our meetup group and also join our meetup group for financial modeling, our meetup group for Excel, and then the Power BI user group for Nigeria, which is pbiusergroup.com slash Lagos. So join if you can. Great. So I'm David. I'm David Brown, founder managing partner of D Brown Consulting also a consultant to the World Bank on all revenue modeling. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I have almost 22 years working with Excel and about 16 years as a financial advisor, trainer, financial modeler, BI consultant. I'm also a master trainer and master instructional designer. So I do quite a lot of training and also create online courses on Office Training Hub. So that's just a lot about me already so let's just move on so overview of power bi that's what we're going to break it down so we'll do an overview of power bi then we do an overview of modeling of course how do you model in power bi and how to build a quick data model so we're going to quickly build a quick data model model for actuals build a quick data model for actual data and then we also kind of see how we bring in budget data, which is not as granular as actual data. How to insert the budget data and then how to calculate actual versus budget and the variance analysis. So that's what we're going to talk about. So let's just jump straight into Power BI. So have Power BI on the screen and uh, we'll just jump straight into Power BI. Uh, what is Power BI. So Power BI is a tool that brings together certain technologies for Microsoft. Microsoft has been kind of testing out in Excel for quite a long time. That's Power Pivot and the language for Power Pivot is DAX. Power Query and the language for Power Query is M. So Power Query is how we bring in data. So let's see. Let's see if we can have data. Let me show you what data we're going to be using so we could build a quick uh, budget model and a, a quick um, actual versus budget model. So here we have our exercise files and exercise files we have, we have data, demo, let me just minimize this. So we have data, demo and exercises. So let's say if we go into data. So here in the data we have sales data and the sales data has some actual data where let's say we have a text dump of all our actual data. So these are all the actual data we have saved as text files. If I open one, for example, you'd see that um, this one, we have data that looks like this. So I have all this data, region, market, store, trade date, Fiscal period, model, line of business, day, category, revenue, and units sold. So, so that's the data we have, right? So that data we have is what we call our fact file. And I'm just going to go straight in and look at the dimension files. So the dimension files are really what enriches our reporting. And let's see what the dimension files contain. So looking at the dimension files, we have LOB, which is like our line of business. So just see LOB, what's that? It's a line of business. We have a model sheet. It's the model sheet. You have I escape. So if I click here, our model sheet has data on right. So our model sheet has data model ID and model model code and model name. Then you have your dates. 
this is like our calendar so we have all the dates for our report so we have dates you can just check change this to a format you can see january first of january all the way so a calendar has to have days full calendar from 2014 to 2020 so our calendar has months years blah 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 all those data there that's cool calendar and we have store data so these are all our dimensions that enriches our report so we're going to pull in we're going to build a quick data model now so i'm going to connect to this and also connect to my fact file so back to power bi so back to power bi we're going to get data under get data we're getting data from excel or really we're getting fact let's get our our dimension files first the easy one so let's get data from excel we know it's in excel it's on the desktop so we get our data we need to get our data get data we go to excel and i just browse to my desktop on my desktop i can see pbi exercise files i go to data and let's go to our sales data we go to our dimension files and we connect to our dimension tables so connecting to my dimension tables in excel we want to pull out our various dimensions for our report so those are the tables the typical vlookup tables that you use so you see a line of business bring in our line of business I bring in our model i bring in our store I bring in our dates where's our dates and we the calendar dates so those are our dates so i load i could edit it first so let's edit it in power query once you click edit it's going to open power query so typically these are the data that you need to use for your reporting these are what enriches the transactions that you have in your sales so that data is opening up so it's opening in power query power query so it's a different to power queries and etls and extract transform and load tool so we've extracted the data from excel now we want to kind of transform it before we load it into power bi that's the idea so line of business let's check so typically you check your your data types see if they're all good this is data type check here is text this one is text so this seems fine d model again when it comes from excel usually it will be nice and clean if it comes from a text file it may have some issues that you need to look out for so here we have our model code which is a text this is a model name is a text that's fine d store the store id text store name text yeah everything the data type seem good d calendar now our date should be a date yes our year should be actually our year and everything really else apart from date should be a text now only the month number should be a number and a whole number we'll see why very soon so this should be a text and yes yeah, so i replace this so we have power query yeah this should be a text this should be a text so we have text there then we have power query power query already has some steps down here it already changed the data type but we're changing all of this with from here all the way to the right every single thing should be a text so it should be text we change this to text right all text great so because we're going to use them in the reports they're like a category field and that's why they should be text so this is a date field this is going to be a number field the rest of text field so i think all the dimensions are fine we're going to close and load so close and apply actually close and load is what you do in excel so close and apply because it's no loading to i mean you could load to excel in power bi you just have a connection to the data so here it is looking and pulling the data into the data model in power bi and so it's going to finish that pretty soon so we have detecting so it's detected stuff let's just go to the tables and see what it brought in so it brought in our calendar d calendar it brought in our line of business which is there you can see it there i can zoom in so you have a look at our line of business so that's our line of business it brought in right and then you can check um d model so this is the model data can just zoom in to see the model data yeah and 
we have our D store. So this is a store. This is all the data about the stores. So you can zoom in to see that. Great. So if you check the model view to see the relationship. So we have all these dimension files. So these are just uh, to enrich our reporting. We don't have the transactions yet, the actual fact files. We don't have that yet. So how do we bring that in? So we're going to bring that in next. Let me just zoom this in so you see that this is our data model. All we're waiting for is our fact files. So our fact files are going to come in here and our fact files update every day you have data, new data coming in. So we're going to bring our fact file using a power query connecting to maybe a text file, a folder that contains some text files. So that's what we'll do next. So we're going to get data. You get data. So we're clicking on get data. This time around, we're going to go to more. So get data more. And it's going to open a dialog box. So this is the dialog box is opening. We're connecting to folder. Now, folder is under file, so same thing, you can get it under all. So, connecting to a folder, we connect, and we're going to go through and look for that text file. So, we're going to browse, go to desktop. Let me go to my desktop here. I check on all data. We click on this, click on data. Come on to data, come to sales. Then we go to the actual, you can see budget there, we'll come to that later, and we're clicking on a text file. So we're connecting to a text file, a text file with all the data in the text file. So these are all the data in the text file. So Power BI, you come to combine, you click on this drop down for combine and say combine and edit. So we combine and edit is going to open Power Query. It's opening Power Query, and in Power Query, we'll be able to edit the data. So here we are, we have is a tab delimited file. It automatically checks what kind of text file it is. So if you check the drop down, we have other forms of text. So if I if I zoom in there, you'll see we have um, colon, comma, equal sign, semicolon, space, tab. You can do a custom depending on what kind of uh, delimiter you're using for your text. So, so this is the data. We're happy with it. We're going to go into edit it. So you click OK. So it's going to open Power Query application. It's evaluating in query. Once it opens a Power Query application, we can now have a look at what it's done. So this is the Power Query. Nice thing about opening, uh, connecting to a folder is there's quite a lot of calculations, quite a lot of things that um, Power BI does by itself. It actually creates a function. If you look at this, this is a function that it has created to automate the consolidation or the combining of the data. So this function was created by Power BI on the fly. So sample file parameter is going to let source, which is csv.document, sample file parameter, delimiter is blah, blah, blah. So all this, this is M, really, M. So trust me, it's done a good job in consolidating it. If you want to have a look at what it's done, this is exactly what it's done. So this is all the steps. So these are all the steps it took. It's consolidated the data and everything you do here, if I do any manipulations here, it's going to record those manipulations inside the function that consolidates the data, this function here, right? So that's the data. And at the end of the day, it's going to give us that data to load and it's going to call it here. It's calling it text dump. So this is the final data we're loading. This is all the manipulation you want to do. Do it here so that once you do it here, it becomes a function. And, and that function just automates the process of consolidating any more text files that goes into that folder. So this text dump, I'm going to rename it as my sales. Or let me just call it actual. Okay, so I just call it actual. Or we could call it sales, but that's my actual sales. So I just say actual because we're going to bring budget later. So that's actual. So I call it actual. Now these are all the steps that's happened, right? So we we have uh, filters, this is the source data, um, down here to the right is where I am. So if you look to the right, you can zoom in and see. So look to the right, you see that's your source filtered, filtered hid hidden files, that's what it did. And then it invoked custom function, then it renamed columns, blah, blah, blah. So those are the steps it automatically... All right, so you can see the 
various steps, nice steps and everything that led to this. So we have everything now. This is us consolidated. It's very simple and straightforward. Fully consolidated. Now, if you want to be sure that you've really fully consolidated, because it seems like just magic, right? It just did it by itself, created a function. When new data goes into the folder, it will update. So let me show you something. So if you see this sample file, so it used the sample file, April as a sample file, to kind of do the um, consolidation and all. So the sample file parameter, and, and this is what two of the things that was used to kind of create this steps, which kind of created this function, which is what we now use to get this result, right? So if I come here, for example, this cleanup thing that this this uh, sample file from text dump, right? Transform sample file. This is what transform the sample file. If I come here and say, do you know what? Show me or show me keep the top, let's say top one row. So if I say keep top, keep top, right? Keep only top one row. When I when I say this on the sample file, look at this. So this is the top one row of this sample file, this sample file, which is April, right? Now, because this is a function, right? This is what's going to be transformed to a function. And is this function to the left here that I'm pointing to the left, right? This function here, if I look to, if you look to the left, it's just it's clearer. So you have the sample file, then this parameter that converts this sample data into a function based on the fact that this is now a function i've kind of worked on this sample file whatever i do on this sample file will transform the entire folder which is where i've converted to actual here so when i click on actual you'll see that actual here i have just one record from every single file so this kind of proves to you that what has happened if I've just taken one record from each file. So this is one record from April 2014, April 2015, April 20, August 2014, August 2015. So these are single, single records from all individual files, right? You can see that. Let me just zoom up. Right. So I can come back to my transformation of the sample file and go back to this and say, look, do you know what? Uh, don't... Uh, don't oh, let me delete this step to the right see this step to the right if you look to the right i said keep first keep first row i don't want that anymore so to the right you see keep first row i'm going to close that let's close that and you'll see that if i come back to action now everything is back if i come back to actual everything is back and all the sources if i click on load more you see that it has loaded everything. All the various text files are loaded. So it's pretty automatic, pretty cool. Works well with text. Doesn't work as well with with Excel when you're consolidating Excel, though. But that's a topic for another day. Anyway, so after transformation, what we need to now do is decide which columns we're keeping. So we're not going to keep this source name column. We're not keeping this region column. And we're not keeping this market column. We're not keeping this because we just don't need it. This region and market, well, we have store and we have a store. We have all this already as like our geography uh, dimension. So we don't really need region and market. It's only store that will be our key. So I'm deleting these three. I'm removing these three columns. We're keeping store. Trade date, yes, we need trade date, but we need to kind of transform the data type for trade date. This trade date data type shouldn't be a it should be a date, right? So we're going to change the data type, but let's delete things we don't need. We don't need this. We don't need mod. Well, we need model. We need line of business. We don't need date category. We remove that. We need revenue and we need unit sold. So now to transform. So we remove things we don't need. The ones we left are really just the ones that are going to connect to our dimension files and then the values that we're analyzing here, right? So the store data should be text. So even though it's kind of done the text thing here, I can convert it. Uh, so if you look at the steps, actually, you see that it's done a change type already. It's done one change type here. So even let me do, let me rewind a bit. I'm deleting that remove. So this change type that it did, it, it kind of identified and changed our data types. Let's delete that. So let's delete that. So we're going to create our types ourselves. We're going to determine our data types ourselves. So first. Before determining the data types, if you look up a bit, 
data types are so important. Every column, you need to define what data type it is. And one of the worst, worst data types you can ever have is the one called any. So if you look up here, it's called any. Yeah, see any, any data type. If I click on this, you see the different data types. Any basically means nothing. And lots of formulas will not work with an any data type. You have to have the correct data type. So this obviously should have been a text data type. But first, let's delete what we don't need. So I'm deleting what we don't need. I'm removing that. We need date. We need store. We don't need this one. We remove this. We don't need We need model. We need line of business. We don't need date category. We remove that. So these category or these fields are what we need to connect to our various dimension uh, files. And then revenue and units sold is our value. Now we can change this. Let me just take this to the right. And let me take trade date to the left here. Yeah? So trade date should be a date data type. So I'm going to change that to a date data type. And look at what happens. By changing trade date to a date data type, it's messed it up. It's giving me errors here. Why is it giving me errors? The reason it's giving me errors is because the date system on my computer is really day, month, year. So let me change, let me delete this change type. So you see what's happening here. Currently, the the date here is month, day, year. But on my computer system, my default date type, that's my default uh, regional settings or date type, or well, I call it my, the way my system understands dates. If I open Excel, you see an example is it understands dates as First, it understands the, it's when you're typing out dates, it will recognize it as month first. So if I do a control semicolon, which is a shortcut for entering date, and I enter. So my system recognizes 160419. This is 16, which is the day for month 19. Yeah, for example. So that is just an example of a date, right? It recognizes day, month, year. But my data is month day year so i need to write a little m i need to tell the system that look this thing here is actually month this date that you're seeing which is coming in as a text for example i'm going to make it a text i have to make it a text first it's coming in as a text then i tell the system please convert this to a date but use the it's currently in english united states settings please convert it to a date based on the English United States settings that it is. To do that, I need to add a column. I'm going to add a custom column. So I go to add column at the top here and I choose custom column. So the custom column says, okay, what exactly do I want? I want my correct date. And in this custom column, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Okay, custom column. So Let's see if I can make it bigger. Anyway, so custom column, I need to write a function called uh, date dot, and you can see IntelliSense is working nicely. Date dot. So if I scroll down on date dot, you see various date dots, everything about dates, date dot. So, so date dot from text is what I need. So I want to take from text. What am I taking from text? This particular trade date. Yeah, comma. I need to kind of get the culture. What do they mean by culture? The culture is currently was it stored as I put an double quotes is actually en dot us what is stored as is en dot us why because we know that the code that has month first then day then year is an English United States code so I close this bracket at the end and this should work fine and I say okay so I should have a new column that has my dates in the correct order right so if I take this to the start this is my correct date and I make this the data data type. So I come here and change the data type from transform. I can actually go to home and do it as well. Come here and change this to the date data type. This we don't need anymore. So I'm removing it. This is this all the way to this, this three uh, text data type and our revenue and our revenue text data type and our revenue is the well is the decimal number data type and units sold should be a whole number data type 
So now we've done the data types, we've done the dates correctly and stuff. Now, even if your dates were correct, please always use this do that custom column and tell it that the dates that are coming in as text are coming in as this, as English United States. So everything is done, transformed, everything is consolidated. We're just going to close and apply. And once we close and apply, it's going to build our small model for actual data coming in. And there we go. Actual data comes in. And here we are. For some reason, it decided to just connect for me without asking. All right. It did auto detection. It auto detected line of business and model. It chose line of business to line of business and model to model code. Now, does that make sense? Model to model code. Mm, let's check. So if I come here, we could just manage relationships and look at it. So if I click manage relationships, maybe that. Okay, now I need to go to the data data model or data for it to activate. It's not opening for some reason. Manage relationships doesn't want me to manage relationships. So typically this button should work. I think this is a small bug. Click, click. It's not working. So if I want to manage this, I can just double click it. If I double click it, it should bring that manage relationship box. So here is taking actual model connected to model code. And that makes sense. Right. What about other relationships we want to create? Let's assume this date, for example, should be connected to this date. So that's the one side and is the many side. And for store, we need to connect. If we check store, is the store should be connected to store name because we know it's stored as store name, not store ID. So here we have it. So these are the one sides and this is the many side. This data model is nice and cool. Nice and everything connects. Yeah, so this data model is nice and cool. Everything connects. So we'll now need to come into our report and we can easily create a very simple report so let's create one report let's say we go to our calendar we pick year we pick month and oh now this is looking strange doesn't it look at this year and month if i come to visualization let's just increase the size the size the default size is way too small i just hope uh, microsoft and uh, our wonderful guys at the power bi team increase the default size it is way too small always small so april august this is not really sorting right so we need to go back to our data model to fix that we go come to our calendar here and what you're going to say here is simply um, you know what i need this my month here to be sorted by if you go to modeling come to modeling Right, so I just need to select our month. I'll go to modeling and then say sort by month number. And that's where we left the month number as the data type called whole number. If you remember, month numbers, data type, where are we? If I come to home, click on home. So the month numbers data type was actually, if I click on modeling, you see it. Month number was a whole number data type. I remember here was a text data type. So I've sorted month by month number. If I go back to my report, everything should kind of re re kind of calibrate itself. So we have January, February, March, April, May, everything seems fine. So let's quickly create a very quick measure. We're gonna do our revenue. So we're gonna do our revenue. Now another thing we need to do, if I check the file and I go to options, sometimes you you know those relationships are automatically calculated or created itself. We really don't want that. So if you go to data model, you go to data model. Another thing we don't want is auto date and time. This, you shouldn't have auto date and time. You should control how time intelligence works yourself. And then auto detect relationships here. We, we really don't want that either. So when you come to options, you need to set, you need to set these options yourself, all right? So you set these options where auto detect. No, I don't want that. And you decide whether or not you want all of these other options working. So I advise you always come down here, data load, what happens when you load data, and choose the options that make sense for you, right? So data data load, if you look up here, see this all the data load options. As I said, auto date and time really is not nice. Automatically creates a hidden date table. We don't want that for each field in the model. No, we want to create the date table ourselves. We don't need that auto date and time. It's like an implicit date table. We don't need that. 
Right. So let's quickly create a measure. So I click OK. So we're going to create a simple measure. And that measure is going to be, let's just zoom in a bit. So let's zoom into the calculation. Let's just make it bigger. So what's this measure going to be called? So we just call it, let's call it uh, revenue, revenue actual, okay? Revenue actual is equal to a sum and of the table called actual, the column called revenue in the table called actual. Simple as that. So I can enter. When you enter, first thing you should do really is format it. Just click on the format and I minimize this. So we've done our first measure. So that's our first measure. Now, if you want to activate it, so look at it here. Now I brought it here, it's under actual. If I tick this, it comes in and this is our actual revenue. So the next thing we want to do is bring in our budget and then we do a variance, right? So we have our actual revenue here. We want to bring in our budget and then we do a variance and that's us done what exactly we wanted to do. How do we bring in our budget data? So let's go have a look at what the budget data looks like. So let me open, I'm going to open the budget. So I'm opening the budget data, it's there on our desktop. If I go to data, I go to sales, data, you see budget. So this is our budget data. So let's see what it looks like. So your budget data, you have to understand that your budget data is also a fact file. You know, we have facts and dimension. So this budget data that we're looking at, if you can just zoom in a bit, what do we have here? So we have year, we have month, we have store ID. So that means we can connect this to the store dimension table. We have store name. So we just have store data. Store data will give us connections to geography as well. So we have store ID and store name and then revenue. So frankly, we can only do reporting by store name and then maybe region name and then state name. If you if you look at the dimension files, you see that. So anything related to store is the only kind of reporting we do. And also date. But we don't really have a date. We have year and month. So we need to kind of construct a date. So we'll see how that works in Power Query. So we need to use Power Query to pull this in. So let's do that. Let me close this. And we go and bring in Power Query. So we're going to bring in this budget data. I can actually copy this link. And we'll use it when we're connecting with Power Query. So I come to Home. I do Get Data. So we're going to get data from Excel. And I can just click and paste this link. So we're getting data, budget data directly. So I bring in the budget data. It's opening. So this is our budget data. I'm going to edit it in Power Query. So it's going to open Power Query. It's opening Power Query now. Now I need to edit this. The first thing I need to do is construct a date from this year and month. And really the simplest way to do it is this very nice, wonderful tool called Columns from Example. So that's under the view, under the uh, add column tab. If you look up here, so column from example, right? So if you look to the left, oops, sorry about that. So column from example, column from example. So let me get my mouse working. Mm, what's this one saying? So column from example. So if I click on this column from example, it wants me to give it an example, right? Column from example. So I'm going to say, do you know what? I want this to be one slash one slash 2014. Then I enter and let's see if it's kind of clued in. So it kind of clued in, see one slash one slash 2014. And hopefully it's done that for all the other ones. Let's see. Can you allow us to go down? Well, 1 slash 1 slash 2014. It did just that. Let's see what it did in the formula bar. So it transformed text combined text dot from month English NG. This is English Nigeria actually. Slash text 
from month English NG slash text from year English NG. Well, it sounds sounds good. So I say okay. This is actually flash fill. It's something like flash fill that we we know of in Excel. Something like flash fill. So I can click on this and come to transform, and I'm going to transform the data type from text to date. So this is now our date data type. I can take this to the beginning. I don't need this and this anymore. It's done its job. I remove the columns. Then my store ID is a text. I can leave that. This is a text. I can leave that. And then my revenue is already a decimal number. So this is fine. So everything here looks good, ready for us to load into our model. So I'm going to load this into our model, come to home, close and apply. So I'm bringing in our budget data into our model. And for you to use your budget data in your model, you need to come to this data here. So this is our budget data. So we now have two fact files. So these two fact files, for them to talk to each other, this is the many and the many side. You can't connect it. You really can't just directly connect it. Look at this merged. What's merged? Let's go rename it. I think um, let's go to edit query. Instead of calling that merge, we should call it something that makes sense. What does merged mean? If you go to budget, merge should be called date. So we're going to double click that and call it date. So date makes more sense. Then I close and apply. So then this is going to change to date. So this is our data model. Now if I connect date here to date here, it's really not going to work. It just won't work. The relationship has cardinality many to many. It's not going to allow many to many. This should only be used if it is expected that neither column, date, and date contains unique values and that the significantly different behavior of many to many relationships is understood. Well, it's too much story for us right now. Date will connect to date here because this is like many to one. And your revenue is revenue, but your store ID will connect to store ID here, right? I can even do store name to store name. So, so what's happened here is that we have this budget connected to two different things, but these two different things here, this calendar and this store, are also connected to actual, and that's how budget will talk to actual through these guys, through date, calendar, calendar, and store. So now I can use budget and write a measure for budget. So I can come to modeling, for example, or come into my um, come into my canvas. So I can come into my canvas, come to modeling, and let's quickly write a new measure. We're going to write under modeling a new measure, and the measure is going to be, if I drop this down, so we're going to write a measure called budget. B budget. So budget data. So budget is going to be equal to sum of my budget table, and in my budget table, I want to sum revenue. All right? So this is my budget enter and I can change the format thousand separator so I've just created a budget measure right so if I click inside here I can actually bring it in so I can tick budget where did I create budget uh, okay I think I created under budget or oh, where did it say I wasn't too clean when I created budget where where did I do okay I did it here in actual that's fine see so I have budget data now next to the revenue actual I have our budget so now we can do a variance calculation our next measure we do is simply say okay what's our actual minus our budget so percentage difference from budget from actual versus budget so here I'll do another measure and this measure is going to be called uh, variance or should I say revenue variance revenue variance percentage or revenue v budget revenue variance or those v budget depends many people have various ways to call this thing revenue vs budget or something percentage yeah so this is our variance percentage and we know that that's going to be revenue actual divided by budget minus one and we can make that a enter now once we enter we make that a percentage and we can now bring this new measure into into our report so revenue budget actual where did we drop that we can clean this so you see I have something in budget and stuff we can clean where all these calculations are so here we have this okay I think we should have it into two decimals or something let's increase the decimals yeah 
so that makes sense all right and here we have our revenue actual versus budget and this is the report we want except that there seems to be no actual data for November how do we solve that well if you remember this our data was actually January to October we don't have November we don't have December so we don't have November we don't have December data and right now we don't have years 2016 we don't have 2016 year so we can pull in this new data from let's say we ask um, we're going to ask people in IT to give us this data and then for 2016 since we're not there yet we will go to the home tab maybe go to edit queries and we're going to edit the calendar table so the calendar table we're just going to edit out um, those years that we don't currently need so under years in the calendar table I'll load more and I'm just going to say okay I don't need 2016 17 18 19 and 20 we don't need that quite yet so if I click OK, I've edited that out of my query. If I close and load and I look at my report, you're going to see that these 2016 and everything is going to disappear. So we stop at 2015. Now we're going to load these two data we have as text files. So if I go to my folder, if I show you my folder now, uh, you'll see that those data are in my folder. So I just quickly go into the folder. I go to the data. I go to sales data, I go to the um, actual data, I go to text dump, or I go to IT downloads and go to text. You'll see I have November and I have December data. October is already in there. So this two, November and December, which I don't have down here, I'll just copy these text files, which I just got from IT, and I'm going to dump them into, into this text dump. So this text dump is where I dump all my data when I get from IT. So I've just dumped December. 2015 and November 2015 you can see those two there so now when I come back to my report here all I need to do when I come back to this report is refresh so if I refresh it's going to go and refresh all my connections to my dimension files my fact file actual and you'll see that this is going to now bring in and populate some data for November and December so just watch put your eyes down here at the bottom see that two data have now appeared and now I have my actual versus budget and the variance for budget and with this variance for budget I can easily do a quick chart so I could remove my revenue and my budget so I'm going to tick on tick this if I click on this visual I remove revenue actual I remove revenue I remove budget data where is my budget data and I have this which I can easily create into a nice line chart and see exactly how we're doing when it comes to budgeting so you can see that this is how we're doing year on year this is how we're doing from 2014 to 2015 when it comes to budget so 2014 we had a figure here and then 2015 it seems that we did better uh, against budget we did minus against budget and compared against budget so yeah we could put that there or we can even change this chart I can change this chart instead of having month in my legend I can have month down here and then I have a different chart which is my line chart I can ex I can drill down a little bit you see my line chart now is by 2014 you can see we're up and down when it comes to budget all the way all all over the place budget and actual budget and actual right you can now bring in something like uh, let's say you go to the uh, your calendar now if you bring in something like um, line of business you have to you it won't really work because um, if you remember our budget is only only connects to geography so I can only bring in something like a store so I bring in something like a store let's say I create it as a tree map and I'm going to take store as my tree map I take store maybe maybe in our store maybe region as my tree map and then I'm going to take actual revenue just revenue actual so this is my tree map if I click on northeast my this is my budget variance data so you can see how how I compare against budget I did pretty well here this is my best month March revenue uh, versus budget was 11.79 percent well that's revenue above budget 11.79 percent and then below budget was kind of ugly right so that's that's the analysis you now have your budget and actual data all looking good and that's pretty quick with Power BI right so that comes to the end of our webinar and we hope you enjoyed it and We'll see you again another week.